Hello everyone, this is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com and this is your weekly forecast for August 30th through September 5th. Can you believe we are here? This is a pretty potent week, I gotta say. Venus opposed Pluto kicks it off, which is never easy on relationships or finances, and Mercury opposes Neptune, which can be confusing at best. Really good for creativity, but we're going to need to employ some serious boundaries this week. Now, if you can do the deep diving that Mercury and Pluto want you to do, then you could probably really reset your conscious mind in a way that probably needs to be done around now. But then toward the end of the week, Venus is going to go from Pluto to Saturn. So we have to transform and rebuild. Thankfully, on the second, we have the Pisces full moon, which coincides with Sun trine Uranus, which might help illuminate a number of things, let's just say. So whatever you can do, <laughs> make some time for yourself and to address certain things that will not be postponed much longer. So let's dive in. The 30th is Sunday. Venus opposed Pluto. This is the classic opposition. Anything with Venus is usually softened, while anything with Pluto is always intensified. And the opposition automatically brings up the push-pull between these two. You are encouraged to tune into your own heart, and then you can trust what is rising from your own depths. Also, any opposition gives you a look back at your starting point, which can reveal something that you may not be giving yourself credit for. This energy intensifies experiences where your relationships and resources are concerned specifically. If you have focused on love to the exclusion of money, then your finances will probably come up at this time for a rebalancing of sorts. If you've been focused on money to the exclusion of family or supportive relationships, then that may be your focus. The bottom line is your true values are up for a purification of sorts. What and who is really, truly important to you? How do you spend your resources of time, energy, and money? What and who are your real priorities right now? So we're approaching harvest as well. So we're assessing 2020 has us assessing in lifetime, much less the year, but it's definitely the time of year where we assess what we got done now. So often we operate completely unconsciously, that's Pluto's realm, the unconscious, being driven by deeper forces than we fully understand. And periodically we must allow them to come up and out so we can distill or release them so they become compost rather than toxic. Since you may feel compulsive in some kind of way, you may as well use that energy to make a deeper commitment to getting to the root or source of any imbalance rather than let it take you away to feed some unidentifiable famine in your own life. Often this activation tends to make you uncontrollably drawn to someone you know is not good for you, or something that you know is not good for you, which can only result in problems. It often provokes manipulation, jealousy, guilt, and other negative emotions that always come up when you're trying to maintain something that wasn't meant to be in the first place. Again, don't try to force your will. It can only lead to a broken heart in the end. If you are already in an intense relationship, beware of subconscious impulses, hidden resentments, unexpressed anger, and or frustration. Expressing it this time can be helpful if you present your concerns in a constructive way. However, you will have to be personally strong and vigilant in monitoring your own emotions in order to do that. Ultimately, if change needs to happen in your relationship, this will be the catalyst. This energy is only quote-unquote bad or negative if you are unwilling to get to the real root or source of the given conflict. Otherwise, it is like a storm that cleanses and clears the air, making everything grow better. So deep breath. Also on Sunday, Mercury opposed Neptune. So this energy requires us to balance the higher and lower mind. Some sensitive souls will feel bombarded by the energies from all sides, and it may feel like information overload and very stressful. The best use of this transit is meditation, not making important decisions or commitments for a week or so. Communication with others is challenged, which is another reason to only communicate with your higher self or at least check in more often this week. Don't believe everything you read or hear. Allow information to flow at a comfortable pace 
and wait for the energy to shift before making any decisions based on the information gathered. Some will access the necessary clarity for furthering their vision, while others' vision will be blurred and just out of reach. So deep breath. It depends on where you're at. Then on the 1st, which is Tuesday, Mercury is going to trine Pluto. So that may help us come up with some creative solutions to our relationship challenges and transformation that Pluto just stirred up with Venus. Now it's like we're going to mentally process and hopefully come up with some ideas to go forward. But we got to get to deeper aspects of ourselves to do that. So this activation makes any deep delving within easier and more fruitful. It encourages you to ask the deeper questions, clarify your deeper feelings, and trust your intuitive gut feelings that are telling you something has to die so some other aspect of your consciousness can live. You will want to explore your inner self, Sort through recently gathered information and try to understand better what your natural process really is. It is best to be alone for such research. Take a day or a weekend and grab your most powerful books and music and get somewhere beautiful if you can. If not, then your bedroom will do just fine. And dig deep. You are finally ready for these deeper truths and you will be transformed by what you learn. If you must communicate with others, plan on that being deep as well. So best to talk to a trusted advisor or wise elder. Nothing superficial today. The only warning with this energy is not to become obsessive about one particular idea and certainly don't try to force any ideas on others. If you feel the deep need to focus on one particular thing, that is fine, but try to keep some perspective or write down all your revelations so you can reflect on them at a later time when you can be more objective and prioritize better. Deep breath. So the next day, Wednesday the 2nd, Venus opposes Saturn. So like I said, early in the week we do the transformational work. Later in the week we rebuild a few things or dig into the structure and foundation to see what's weak and not working. Where Sun opposite Saturn has the focus squarely on you, the individual, Venus opposite Saturn often illuminates the relationships that you have magnetized or repelled in your own life. It is here that I also like to remind folks how valuable midpoints can be as they give you a direct look back at your starting point, which offers unbelievable clarity about what you may be dealing with in the present moment. There is a push-pull between your true values and the current reality of your relationships and or your resources. You may find yourself questioning what, as well as who, is or is no longer of value or important to you. Or you may find yourself facing some hard and unavoidable personal truths. Do not feel sorry for yourself and do not take it out on others. It is a time to take responsibility for making new choices. Looking back will only trip you up. Challenges may center around commitments you've made out of obligation and or a sense of duty rather than because you actually wanted to contribute. You can use this energy and activation to align your reality with the values of your heart. Don't allow the anxiety associated with change to keep you from making these important decisions at this time. If you give in to your fears, you could get caught up in martyrdom or victim consciousness. Deciding what you want, committing to the work it will take to manifest your vision, and then getting to work, that's what Saturn will reward with tangible and long-lasting results. And you will never regret investing in yourself this way. So deep breath. This is your values and priorities, having a little bit of a reality check from something that started about six months ago. So we're talking spring to fall, and it's just time to check in. Same day, the second is a pretty big day. Wednesday, we have sun trining Uranus. This energy is wonderful for a little self-examination, so the party continues, and taking action on your own behalf. Now, that might be questionable. Look at your habits, home situation, work, or anything else that is important to you and look at how you've gotten to where you are. What kind of choices led to here? This is a good time to look around and see how you can conserve what is useful and release that which is no longer relevant for you going forward. It's also a good energy for organizing and clearing the decks, so to speak, of things that have piled up but still need to be dealt with or released altogether. You may be feeling very practical, possibly selfish, but it's actually self-preservation. So this is just, sun and Uranus always wakes up something for us. We get inspired 
And because the rest of the week is so assessment heavy and release work concentrated, now that we segue to the full moon as well, it's probably illuminating what has to go in a huge way. But let's be okay with it. And maybe we are a little surprised at first at the few things or the people that we want to cut back right now. It's deep, I know, but self-preservation is going to require some cutbacks. To navigate the rest of the year and get into 21 smoothly is going to require some cleanup and some clearing and some lightening of the load in some capacity. So we have our full moon and three more activations. So we are out of the fixed energy of Leo, which has activated both the need to stabilize certain things as well as release permanently some aspect of self so that your life can actually function in the physical reality you're currently living. That said, no matter how bad it is, change really is only one decision and a renewed commitment away. We are now moving through the mutable energy of Virgo, which can help us process and assimilate all that has lived and died thus far this year. Now is the time to make necessary arrangements for new life to come in and thrive. Think nesting in the sense that you're preparing space for something new in your life, but because it is Virgo, it is more about how this new life, energy, or direction is going to actually work into your natural rhythm and routine. How's that going to work? If you have made a ton of new connections and friends recently and all your creativity was activated and your heart engaged, then Virgo energy comes in and helps you create a new system and help you get used to your new rhythm. It's time to create a whole new daily routine that better supports who you are and are becoming. We are all finding various systems and routines that have historically worked that are now obsolete and no longer work for whatever reason. That is always a clear indication that it is time for a new one. And if you're able to create one, tweaking as you go and leaving it open to further revisions, then when Libra comes next month, you'll be able to really make those connections with others, personal or professional, easier to navigate. This conscious clearing can create space for some powerful new relationships, partnerships, and collaborations. However, if you have spent the last month of Leo examining your own self-worth, wondering why you magnetize certain things and people and repel others, and generally feeling like the life you're living does not reflect who you are in your heart of hearts, then this month of Virgo will help you heal those aspects of self which will enable you to be more congruent so you can take advantage of the coming opportunities in Libra. So the Pisces full moon is best for releasing illusions and delusions any ways we've been unrealistic lately. It's the best full moon to release self-sabotage, compulsiveness, addiction, martyrdom, and victim consciousness, to name a few. The full moon is illuminating where we may have to be more practical and present. This is a purification time of year, so healthy boundaries are vital as you integrate the year and assimilate your own personal harvest for 2020. Allow your imagination some space to connect to those creative solutions that are customized just for you and renew your connection to both a spiritual and physical daily practice. This is not new or news to you, I'm sure, but even if you have been the most dedicated and consistent ever, every year, this is an opportunity to freshen up the practice so you are more inspired and uplifted. If you need or want some help freshening up your practice, reach out of course, to your mystic mentor over here. The energy this month supports you assessing your strengths and weaknesses and recommitting to balancing your soul work with your daily work, allowing the fragmented aspects of life to come into a cohesive whole and focusing on the little things that make the grand vision possible. With the rapid pace that this world is shifting, your time is much better spent on that which you deeply and truly value not narcotized or distracted by nonsense and propaganda, nor giving in to emotional overwhelm or irrational fears. Instead of deluding yourself, delaying your decisions, or taking timeouts with TV or the like, try to take some time to sit with your higher self in silent communion. Allow a conversation to evolve between yourself and great spirit. Intuition is like a muscle. You have to work it to gain strength. Trusting the guidance received during these quiet moments strengthens the connection to your intuition, keeping foremost in your mind that while the chaos and illusions swirls around, you have the internal compass of the heart and your own intuition to rely on, and this is the month to fortify those connections. 
So Pisces full moon is the best time of year every year, August, September, to release shame, blame, and guilt and embrace the value of the lesson in every experience, release criticism, judgment, and fear, and embrace compassion for others and patience with your own process, release the addiction to unobtainable perfection, and embrace trusting your creative spirit and inherent beauty. Release petty distractions and victim consciousness and embrace your inner authority to direct your own life. So deep breath. Pisces full moon is a big one. We initiated a new vision in spring that is culminating at its peak now in fall. How's it going? And what can you pull out of this year? So now we move to the third, which is Thursday, Mercury trine Saturn. This energy is good for deep thinking. You are sharp and your standards are high because you are in strategy mode, or you can be. This is a more solitary energy, though, so communications with others may be hampered a bit because it is time for you to hold your own at some new level. It's time to focus on the details that hold the big dream together, all the little things that make the grand vision work. Some respect that attention to detail, while others may consider it nitpicky. But it is what the energy supports at this time. So don't worry if others don't understand. By the same token, you may also feel a little overwhelmed by the many little things that cannot be denied or delayed and thus a sense of urgency to get it all done. Beware of a tendency toward pessimism, depression, or overwhelm. Try to stay focused on all the blessings that you do have and all that you have accomplished instead of what's still on the list of things to do in life. This energy is not intended to make you feel bad about all the things left yet to do, but encourage you to begin the necessary steps for manifesting your dreams. This energy just makes you focus on the practical side of manifesting. Clear the debris and begin to lay a new, clean, solid foundation beneath your goals. Saturn gets you present to the necessary steps, and Mercury helps you think more clearly. So then we move to the fourth, which is Friday, Venus square Mars. Okay, this is always a realignment, and we know they're doing their thing all year. So this is interesting. This is your inner sacred feminine and masculine pushing out of comfort zone and into new territory. It's time to recalibrate how you give and receive, as well as how you be versus do. It helps to know the signs and elements to consciously choose how to work with this activation. So in this case, Mars is in Aries. And Venus is in Cancer, so it's personal for sure. And it's just a realignment because who you are and what you want is changing, so your relationships are naturally going to have to change or go away. That makes the elements fire and water, so it's a little combustible, but it's also the reminder you need to tune into how you direct your own power as well as what you magnetize and repel naturally. Anytime Venus and Mars interact, the energy has to do with your relationships both personal and professional, private and public. Squares create the necessary tension to catalyze action. As an individual, it's time to grow, change, and integrate your own values and priorities with your own desires and passion. However, on another level, it can activate sexual energy as that too is the energy of creation. So if you are in a happy, healthy relationship, then it's a great energy for you expressing your love in a physical way. However, if your relationship already has tension, especially in the physical realm, then this is a difficult energy to deal with, and the only real solution is open communication and a willingness to compromise. So good luck. Finally, also on the 4th, Friday will be Mercury sextile Venus. To close it on a soft note, this is a great opportunity to beautify your ideas, improve or deepen them so they are expressing more of your unique authenticity. Communication and relationships usually goes well under this influence. So after the storm clears, I think we can do better with our personal relationships. This energy also turns your thoughts and ideas toward how you feel and what inspires you with love and beauty. This is a great time to be particularly creative or do something that activates your own inner artist. It's best to keep it light and let go of your mundane burdens just for a time. Pleasure reading, a walk on the beach, obviously... A play or a museum aren't as easy as they used to be when this paragraph was written years ago, but it's good to do some kind of artistic, beautiful nature or something. All good things to do this week. And they are. They'll support the deep digging and the dive into your own consciousness and what you're trying to do and all 
the relationship decisions you need to make, whether they're personal or professional. Things have changed in 2020 and how we move forward is going to be really important to setting up a foundation of individual security and good boundaries and and the ability to continue to function no matter what the rest of the world's doing. So that's sort of what's up. If we can heal and transform certain things about our individual lives, we can do way better with this social and collective shift, which is really important. We're moving to the Aquarian age where we're going to be more independent individuals that know they're part of a whole and know that every action and response affects and ripples out to the rest of the world eventually. (laughs) Even if it takes some time, it eventually makes its way. So use this year's reset for what it's good for and change your life in whatever way you can. Again, don't try to be overwhelmed and do it all. Pick one thing that maybe you've been dreaming about for 10 or 20 years to shift and now you finally can. I think we're supported for that. And of course, reach out if you need to. The Astro Tarot reading is excellent for this kind of exploration. And the Venus Circle is great for ongoing values and priorities. And right now I'm doing the Free Seasonal Circle, which is also going really well. So there's plenty of support tools out there and a support team available just for you. You do have to invite them, though. Help has to be invited. That's how it works. So just know that your angels, ancestors, and animal spirit guides surround you with love, light, and truth. And that staying clear and connected within is how you get your own answers. So I hope you have a fantastic week. Reach out if you need to. This is Kelly Beard of Karmic Tools signing off. Thanks for listening. This is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com and I am so grateful for your time, energy, and support. Please share this with those you think would resonate and reach out if and when you need to. Kelly at KarmicTools.com The goal of my weekly forecast is to alert you to the energies and activations that we're all experiencing and the possibilities for conscious co-creation as an individual. Awareness of the energies is the first key, but I invite you to take it to the next level by checking out my readings, telecircles, and subscriptions, which are all geared toward individual support that helps you understand your own unique blueprint. My specialty is cycles and patterns, and I love helping people figure out their own within the context of the social and collective rhythm. To some, working with their own cycles and patterns is a completely new and foreign concept. But there are many planetary cycles that coincide with natural life cycles that allow us to co-create in mystical as well as practical ways. I create custom tools that I have tried and tested myself for almost 40 years, and I do the work alongside my circle every time. So I hope you will reach out if you feel called to dive deeper into your own soul's natural rhythm. Talk to you soon. One love.